Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabara here, and I'm here at Echo Park Film Center in Echo Park, California. Why am I here? Because I'm going to watch a screening of the short films that my best friend on YouTube by the name of Wet Movie 1 and Hero Super 99, which at this rate, Brandon Mitchell and Gabriel Malcando. What short film is it? It's called Night Owls. That's right. And we're not here yet, but we're just gonna get ready for it. So, can't wait to watch it. Yeah, look at that big screen right there. Oh man, look at all of this stuff. See, you can see a lot of books right here. See a lot of film reels right there. Man, this is like heaven right there. So I could see a lot of movies here. Cool. Here's the Night Owls Blu ray, as you can see right here. Wow. Look at all this. I can't believe it. I'm actually going to watch this. Hey, maybe I might get it. And here they are. <laughs> These two guys right there. Hello, Joseph. Hello. What's up? Wow. Oh, cool. I haven't yeah. seen you but since the last time we hung out with Kel Mitchell. Yeah, we haven't seen each other for like three years, I believe. Is that how, is that how long it's been? Yeah. Like two, that was like 2015. I know, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy, man. I'm so happy to see you again, though. Yeah, I'm happy to see you too. Hell yeah, man. So, <laughs> so I'm right here. Yeah, man, we're here. These two guys at the Echo Park Film Center out here in the middle of like I don't know the ghetto. Like I'm, I'm hoping I don't get shanked or killed. I hope out not. Here. You know what I mean? Like. Is this next to like? Yeah, I know. I mean, I, yeah. I, I've been to Echo Park for some time. Yeah, I think the last time I came out here was a couple weeks ago with my friend Michael Ray Bauer. Oh, yes. And we went to like from, a, a hip hop concert. Shorts. Yeah, he might be here tonight. Oh, cool. I'd love <laughs> but, to meet him. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully he shows up. He said he, said he might, but we'll see. Okay. But I really do appreciate you coming out, man. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, the, the last time I've been to Echo Park, though, was when I went to get those leeches, which is the, for the dogs. Oh, yeah? Yeah, the, we have uh, two Cerberus animals now. Oh, to help with the stuff off the dogs? Yeah. Gotcha. We're having some difficult times uh, with the, the apartment that we're living in. So, what have you been up to lately, man? I've been doing some movie reviews, mostly. And, and then I was just hanging around, you know, just going on the computer and looking at some you. other stuff. Watch some movies. Hell yeah, man. We all do that. We're all nerds here. Yeah. <laughs> of course. I'm a total nerd. But I love movies and I, I'm a movie buff and who yep. cares? <laughs> yeah, man. The last time, like I said, we hung out together, we we're all just hanging out with Kel Mitchell like there was nothing. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that was still so super fun. Yeah. Yeah, man. I'm just gonna head up in there for just for a second and see, you know, if my friend Andrew's here or not. Okay. But I'll see I'll see you in just a moment. All right. Look at all these film cameras right there too. Man, look at all that. What's that like? I don't know. I'm sorry. I, you can hear him in the background. So who cares? Hop Harrigan by Columbia Pictures. Yeah, there's Shaq. I think it's one of those containers. I think. The watermelon man, yeah. Let's put it here so we see. Let's see what they got. Certain, excuse me. Look at all these speakers. Here's those uh, film reels as I show you right here. Look how different they really use here. See, they got some old movies, even Oscar winners reels. And you can see the Charlie Chaplin, uh, The Birth of the Nation right there. Wow, you can see a lot of good stuff here. See, this is like, 
Once again, heaven. There's even it's a wonderful life right here. Uh, man. Uh, and this is like a list where they have to develop. You know, they film develop all these films right here. Yeah, of course. You know, when I took black and white photography, that's where I had to do all this. Yeah, I mean, when I was in GCC. Ready? Yes. All right. Let's get ready for the screen. Yeah, I can't wait to watch all the short films here. <laughs> the lights are on. We've got a handful of people here just chilling, ready to watch these really bad movies. Hopefully, yeah. you guys don't care if you're on this thing for a second. But, uh, yeah. You're not embarrassed? Nah, let's do it. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's do it. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, thank you for being so patient. Uh, my name is Hema and I'm a co-op member here at the Echo Park Film Center. Have you guys ever been here before? No, it's no, first time. Cool. So, welcome. Um, we are a non-profit media art center and uh, we, our mission is, our goal is to make film accessible to everyone. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, we also have a film video. This is a mini version of this. But yeah, the film mobile has gone all around the state, uh, even outside the state, um, having screenings and workshops for everyone. And the fourth thing is we're also a, 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 an art, artist in residence space. So we have summer residents for uh, um, LA, you know, LA residents as well as foreign residents. And yeah, and they can come out here, use the space, create films. And uh, that's open to anyone, not just filmmakers. And yeah, um, thank you all for being here. Um, today we're showing Night Owls, and I'll give the space to Carlos to talk about it more. Thanks for coming, everybody. So, um, Andrew, Carlos. So, um, I first became aware of Brendan, probably like, I don't even know. It was before 2010, I think. And so YouTube was in its infancy, and vlogging really wasn't like this. It wasn't an awareness to vlogging yet. And there was something really raw about Brendan and how candid he was that was just really attractive to me as content. And then one day when I was kind of going through his channel, I came across Night Owls 1 and 2. And 3 and so on didn't even exist yet. And my mind was just kind of like, wow, what's, what is this? It's really interesting. This guy that just kind of like talks at the camera actually took some effort to create more cinematic type pieces. And in watching these little short films, you can tell that Brendan really had an acute awareness to different types of filmmaking techniques. Mm -hmm. And so there was something that was just, I don't know, again, just really engaging and interesting yeah. to me. And references to like the movies that Brendan liked. And, and that we all kind of grew yeah. up enjoying. And uh, also, obviously, us being residents of the valley, yeah. we recognize the landscape that was filmed around the, in the movie. So it was a really, kind of a cool thing to go on YouTube and see these movies, but also know the places. And it was just like a, a really awesome thing to have on YouTube. And then obviously later we realized that uh, sometime after that they weren't available anymore. Yeah. And then that's when we reached out to Brendan and to try to put them all together in some sort of archive in a way that they exist in, as a piece, as a whole. And so we scoured through <laughs> Brendan's well, or, or, say, yeah, I think that's kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah. When they got taken down, Brendan didn't even think to like, backlog these and, 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 and save them anywhere. So he actually didn't really have like the highest quality of, of the copies of these, right? No. Yeah, so I forget. Because I didn't think anyone was going to care if one was my friends and family. So yeah. he gave us like this dead hard drive and yeah. like a bunch of discs yeah. and we did digging. But what's amazing was in that digging, we also found some really cool content that you didn't mm -hmm. put out before. Mm -hmm. Some other stuff. And, yeah, yeah, so we threw that on the Blu-ray as well. So. Yeah. Um, and we also shot some commentary, mm -hmm. um, yeah. and it was also really great to, for Brendan to give us the, the creative liberty to express like ourselves like uh, visually as as uh, artists and designers, and so we, we took a lot of creative uh, uh, liberties with the with the um, packaging and the and the DVD menu. So it was just like a really fun project uh, for all of us. Yeah. So enjoy. Uh, yeah. Thank, thank you. you so much. I love a Q and A after with these two okay. guys. Yeah. <laughs> Woo!
right in the middle of it, it's Microwave Bower along with Fluffy Gamer. Yeah, it's like a, it's like an oven in here. I know, right? <laughs> Jake, I'm scared. I just gotta kick my ass. Jake, we have your fifty bucks. You mean my fifty bucks? <laughs> we don't even really know what we did, except for this last. We just sort of is that, did it. Is that Jesus? Should <laughs> <laughs> uh, be shining down on us after all those uh, f bombs. Uh, yeah. 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 Nine hours happened. Nine hours go from nine hours to nine hours five. That I'm not sure, but we have a, a three of the cast members of the Night Owls films here today. One of which helped me start uh, the whole filmmaking thing to begin with. Uh, my friend Chris Medino right here with his, uh, his son, Bastian. And, uh, what was the question? So how did you get up, started doing that in the first place? Like what? How did we start? Yeah. I, I got a camera for like my birthday one year, and I'm just like, I love movies. Let's see if I can make one. And I, you know, that's what the first one was. Yeah. And if you notice in the credits, the first one, if anybody was paying attention, uh, Joey um, Travolta was on there, which is John Travolta's uh, brother, and I, I went to one of his film, filmmaking classes, and 
He just pretty much showed me how to edit stuff. Cool. Yeah. Inclusion films. Okay. How did you get Ron Jeremy in the United States? How did I get Ron Jeremy in there? Yeah. Well, I was at Comic Con one year, and he was there one year making a porno movie. <laughs> or, well, it's like, well, a low budget, you know, horror movie slash porno movie, whatever you want to call it. And he needed a hotel room to use. And uh, I had a hotel room that he can come to. And I'm like, hey, since you're using my hotel, can I get a little clip with you? Uh -huh. There you go. That was it. Um, how hey. you and Gabe became friends and decided to come up with the movie I did together? Uh, we, we, I've known him now for a really, really long time and stuff. And, but I did a lot of moving around, so I, and I didn't lost contact with him for a while. And then when I came back to... Okay. Uh, to Chatsworth, and all, we, kind of, you know, we kind of bumped into each other, and then he had an idea for 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 a second part, and I just said, you know, yeah, I'm in. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Hey, uh, how did you get Sean C. Phillips uh, on your one of your short films? Like, how, how night, how uh, we, on one of the Night Owls. How did we get Sean into the Night Owls? Huh? Yeah. Um, That's all. Well, back in the day, I used to, you know, uh, you know, do the YouTube videos and. We just used to talk, because that's all we used to do, is just all talk about movie stuff all the time, and that's just pretty much it. And I'm like, hey, I'm doing one. You want to do, be a part of it? Because at the time, he lived in Maryland, and uh, he was coming to you know San Diego Comic Con one year, and I was just like, you might have to shoot a little thing at the end of one day, and that was it. And we shot that one little clip of you know, us in that you know, hotel room air lobby area. Oh, and uh, yeah. I think, uh, how did you get Lloyd Kaufman? In one of them too. If you notice, yeah, how did I get Lloyd Kaufman? The same way I got Sean. I was at Comic Con and he was there. I'm like, hey, Uncle Brady, do you mind if you film something? He's like, okay. He's like, it's all about supporting independent art and stuff. Yeah. That's cool. Can yeah. I ask what one of the cast members thought of working with you and Gabe? Or I spoke with you. Yeah, I, I, Chris, I believe it's Chris. Sorry, I didn't hear it. How was it to work with Gabe and Brendan? And did you know it was a movie, a vlog, or did you not even know it was anything? We were just screwing around. He, he asked me uh, if we could shoot a little bit over at, at uh, Pierce College, and that was where we were in detention the first time. And, and it just kind of went off from there. I mean, it was a lot of fun. Gabe was fun to work at. Brendan wrote everything. He directed everything. He did all the sets. I mean, I didn't do the sets. The sets were there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm sure y'all saw the green thing during the phone call. You know? yeah. he made sure that that I was like holding it just before he cut out. Thanks for that. Yeah, no, but me, me and Chris. Uh, actually, I, I think I was friends with Gabriel first when it came to like elementary school and things. But we don't really remember going to school together and at that, that time. But then I went to high school and I went was high school uh, friends with Chris and uh, we used to hang out all the time and I got that camera around that time I'm like hey let's try to film something even though that first one was kind of rough a lot of them are but uh, was, that's just how we did it and then in the second one when he said he was moving away at the time he really was moving away and I was like I'll just write that into there because Gabe came into my life again after all those years so that's pretty much how it all just happened it's a real life story. yeah and yes I'm vlogging right now <laughs> As like Shay Carl would say back in the day, I'm vlogging, bitch. Or uh, as Michael Ray Bauer would say, vlogging, bitches. Or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and also, that last film that you, you guys saw is part of a horror anthology that my main man, uh, Aaron, made. It's called An Hour to Kill, which will be out pretty soon. Because I think all, everything's pretty much done, right, Aaron? Yeah. Yeah. Because so you guys like that, there's a lot more craziness to happen in there. Like people in pick costumes, you know, fucking each other. <laughs> <laughs> sort of stuff. You know, if you like, if you like that kind of action, there you go. Any, any interesting stories from the set, like, that happened with people watching you film or anything like that? Uh, uh, when, when I was, when we were making them, do you remember anything? Um, no, I just remember there was, um, there was oh. this one scene and all that where, you know, where I, you never where I got slapped in one of the, like uh, in, in one of the flashbacks. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah, 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 that actually was real. That, that was a funny thing and all that. She actually uh, clapped me for reals and all that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, do you, do you remember any stories when it comes to making the first two? Like anybody giving us any problems? I don't think there was. Nah, everybody was pretty cooperative. The fella at the cigarette store was just really happy. Yeah. I don't know if we get the sign in the shot. 
Yeah, because back, yeah, back in the day, like, you see he's filming his video stores and all sorts of stuff. You may be like, how the hell you do this with no budget? That, that's still there, that cigarette store. Yeah. Different cigarette store, but still there. No, but back in the day, all we did was go into these, uh, you know, sto stores that I, the video stores and, and stuff, and be like, hey, I'm here all the time. Can I film in here for a minute? He's like, yeah, just don't film customers. I'm like, okay. <laughs> And th this little guy would have been in one of the movies, but he wasn't the born yet. But, uh, yeah. He's, a, he's in the commentary. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was wondering, how closely do you guys stick to the script? Is there any improv or ad that's going on, or is it all script? <laughs> Dude, 90% of it's all ad lib. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now, except for like, uh, like part uh, three and four was written by my friend Serto24. He used to be on YouTube doing stuff all the time. Like if you see like the dialogue kind of changed up and was like faster paced, that was written and everything. But most of it was just ad libs. Like the stuff with me and Sean, there was nothing written. You know, cool dooter and stuff. It was just us messing around. So you kept the Serto script though? Like when he wrote something like you guys? I stuck to it for the most part. Like, for the exception of like little things here and there or whatever. Yeah. What's your favorite scene of the movie? Oh. Or all the parts. Anyone? I'll teach you later. Oh, uh, my favorite scene. Um, I would have to say. Um, it would have to be the little bathroom scene in part two and stuff and all that. <laughs> that that shit was hilarious. Uh, you. Then what about The Bathroom scene is is very funny. Uh, so I'm a little confused oh, where well. it's not just quail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I like that. No, but when it comes to like the bathroom scenes in these movies, they're like, what the hell, you have a bathroom fetish? <laughs> no, not really, but just back in the day when me and Chris used to go to school together, uh, we would usually go into the bathrooms and hide during like class times and stuff. And that's pretty much what we did, so that's why they kind of stayed into the, at least the first two of them. Um, what kind of inspired the dialogue? I know it was ad lib, but like, is there anything you reference, like any other kind of movies that have really good scene dialogue? Uh, not really, but I did like little things in some of the movies, like I uh, played music to like um, some of my favorite movies of all time, like Good Burger and yes. different things like that. And as I'm walking out of detention with my uh, friend Chris in the first one, I raised my hand up like Bender. If you uh, you don't want to really notice this, because I didn't freeze frame it or anything, like Bender does at the end of Breakfast Club. Stupid little things, like no one ever notices, but I just do it for fun. Uh, what kind of films inspire you? What kind of films inspired me? Well, I mean, I just mean, you know, like, what are your favorite films? And my favorite films of all time are like The Goonies, uh, Chasing, not, you know, The Goonies, Clerks, uh, a lot of the Kevin Smith stuff I like, like, that dialogue Kevin Smith writes. What about Heavyweights? Oh, of course, Heavyweights is the bomb, dude. <laughs> yeah, of course. What my favorite. What inspired you to take on more of a vlogging style of filmmaking? Uh, you mean this last one that you saw? Well, no, I mean, like, as a content creator. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, what inspired you to make that switch to a more vlogging style filmmaking? I don't know. I don't know if you would call what I'm doing now on YouTube filmmaking. I'm just sort of just, I guess, yeah. just sort of messing around doing what I do. But it's all content. And it, yeah. it seems like you made a deliberate, you know, you made a lot of short films, it seems, at the beginning. Yeah. And he's right. It's like your YouTube channel in the last couple of years has been consistent vlogging, whereas, you know, we're not seeing like any... Of your music videos that you supposed or, or yeah, because I, I I just come to find out that no one really cares about them. <laughs> really? Yeah, like no, the views went nowhere on them. So I just I, I try to just keep going with stuff that I like to do and that people watch, like so the hoarding ups and stuff. You know? Night Owl Six not a possibility. Night Owl Six could happen, especially <laughs> since he's he lives in town again after all these years. Well, we'll just leave that a surprise, right? Yeah. <laughs> But your, 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 your dream initially was a filmmaker, correct? Yeah, to, to be in movies. And, and now movies. you've got caught in the YouTube clickbait game. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think I would say clickbait, because I don't really use... Well, you know, but you, whatever's popular, you're filming or you're, you're yeah. getting the numbers. But I would tell you, just in my life, I'm trying to look for my passion again. Mm -hmm. And you're a very great friend of mine. And I want to let you know you need to go back to filmmaking. Woo! Yeah, you yeah. should. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, that means uh, time for another Las Vegas outbound. Oh, yeah. yeah. That'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you guys ever saw the, anybody ever got the DVD of that version, of that movie, yeah. it's, it's like the X-rated version where Gabriel, like, you see everything in his <laughs> That's to say, no one wants to see that. So, <laughs> we're not screaming that next. Uh, not, no, not at all. <laughs>
Snapchat. <laughs> yeah. Like, I believe, Brendan, you got so many horror producers, you know, Friend, yeah. movie producers, like Aaron in front of us and all that. Yeah. And I know they know who you are, and they accept you, but I think if you made some more films and did it on a regular basis, yeah. they would realize that talent as opposed to only oh. vlogging, and they would, like, literally want to look at some of your scripts or maybe produce something you did. Mm -hmm. With a little bit of money, and I really think you should go back. Yeah, do that if you can. Because now watching watching these back after all these years, it, I don't really look at these all the time or anything. But um, after watching them, it seems like I I gotten better at it a little bit, yeah. little by little. Especially since the first one, I'm not saying I'm, I'm gonna be the next like Spielberg or anything, but I think I can do something with it. Like I like I, like he said, I have friends like Michael and other people that may may help us in the future do something cool, you know. I have a little star right here that might be in the next one. Yeah, that'd be cool. Rewrite Night Owl and then do it 20 years later or so. Yeah. And see how it works. I actually had an idea for another another short film. When it comes to, like, since my sister has a kid, has two kids and a baby, uh, like, you know, I wake up one day to a knock on the door and it's just a baby there. And it's all up to me and Gabriel to try to figure out what we're going to do and how to take care of it. You know what I mean? It's just like, you know, two dudes who don't know shit about anything trying to take care of a kid. <laughs> Yeah? Seriously, yeah. Yeah, and we have to like, try to call Luna or different friends that we have to try to help us. Uh -huh. Gabe will be like, let's change the diapers and all that. Yeah. Let's <laughs> 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 that thing at me. Oh, yeah. that me right. Like I'll an cast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, but you, you never know what, what I'll do in the future. But I know it's kind of hot in here, and I don't want to keep you guys here. This ain't oh. hot. Yeah. Yeah. This ain't hot at all. Yeah. But if you guys have any other questions, you know, feel free to let us know. And we do have copies of the Blu-ray that Andrew brought over. Uh, if you guys want to get one. Yeah, I want, uh, I I want one. Okay. I believe it's $19.99 or $20 bucks if, we, if you guys want to get it. And uh, I really do appreciate you guys all coming out and everything. And yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What's everyone here, too? You got a little blonde in your hair now. You went to a real professional haircut person. Uh, I Hey, I just finished watching Night Owls. Oh, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> but it's really hot in here. God, I feel like an oven in here. Asian, one of the first movies ever made. That's, you know who? I think it's 16, 8, they have all the different types of projects. Super 8. Look how the. This is like. This might be like 65mm. Right so there here. are the real movie, or. Or 35mm. Yeah. Mm. Are they like copies or something? Yeah, they're real. Yeah, here's uh, Donkey Lips himself. Uh, well, Michael, Michael Ray Bauer. Michael Ray Bauer. Once we meet in person, you're my friend, so I become Michael. But yes, I played Donkey Lips in Salute Your Shorts. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, and here's uh, Fluffer Gamer. Yeah. Oh, cool. This is me too. Too, too fatty. <laughs> too, too fatty. Well, I'm getting fat too. <laughs> But I, I'm, I'm trying to lose weight too. I'm just taking cycling and all that. Yeah, the hardest thing in life to do is to change your eating habits. Yeah, no kidding. We're getting older. We gotta get it done, brother. Yeah. Take our life and then one double cheeseburger at a time. Yeah. It's, I mean, but I don't blame you. I just I love food. We said that in the car. Live my life one quarter pounder at a time. A quarter pounder. That's what it was. Yeah. Gabe. Yeah. You forgot, you forgot your name. Your name. Yeah, signing some Blu-rays here. What's up, Joseph? Did oh. you like the show, man? Yes, I really do. Yeah? Yeah. That's and cool. I just got the Blu-ray already now, so I'm happy. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Awesome, dude. Yeah. Thanks for getting one, my man. I really do appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, welcome. All right. So that was the screening of Night Owls, yeah, a series of short films that was done by my best friend, Brendan Mitchell, a.k.a. Web Movie One, along with his best friend, Gabriel Macando, aka Hero Super 99, which they've been doing that since, interesting enough, 
I think 2006 to be exact. Couldn't believe it. Because <laughs> what's really interesting though was that he actually worked with uh, Joey Travolta. Yes, Joey Travolta, who happens to be the older brother of John Travolta. And I was at Inclusion Films uh, back in 2011 where I got to meet him and you know, we started doing all these short films and everything, so it's cool. Nevertheless. Well, anyway, he's been doing them for some time, mostly on his YouTube channel. And apparently he only uploaded two before it was taken down due to copyright. Yeah, you know how YouTube is. But whatever. I mean, it took him some time to actually post it on different places before he finally decided to put them all together on one Blu-ray that I just picked up. Right here. <laughs> I got this for less. Ten dollars. Because the original cost was like, I think, nineteen ninety-five. 20 bucks, maybe a little more for the deluxe edition that actually had a VHS tape and a, yes, a VHS tape and a DVD. But I went ahead with this because it's, well, it's better off. Because <laughs> you get to see all the shorts um, all together with tons of features here. Not bad. So it's all put together. And. I also got this too, a Mid Everyone sticker. I had a good time. I mean, it was uh, fun, even though, yeah, even during the screening, and I just mentioned it, it was really hot. It was like an oven in here. Uh, they didn't put the air conditioning like they were hoping they would, but that wasn't the case. You know, hey, <laughs> what can you do uh, during the summer? But uh, Brendan's friends were there, yeah, some of them. So they, they came over, you know, including actor Michael Ray Bauer, yeah, from Salute to Shorts, and he's been in several others. Uh, he even brought in his other friends like Fluffy Gamer and all that. So they're all there, uh, except for maybe a few people, like I think Luna, Luna Meow and, and 90s Kids Forever weren't there, but basically I know they were there on the Night Owls uh, screening party that they went to and, and that's where they show all the short films they sent out all the blu-rays and the deluxe editions and all that yeah which apparently I didn't make it they did it in 2016 but that was due to the fact that I was packing up you know getting ready to move to another place which turns out to be this place <laughs> yeah <laughs> of course it, it took a long time but, at this rate, um, I finally had a chance. I mean, I got to meet him once again. It's been a while since I've seen him, since uh, the last time we, we met. It was actually uh, at Flapper's Comedy Club in Burbank, California, where we got to see Kel Mitchell. And I was with Opa, along with uh, her boyfriend and, and my sister, Eileen. So we had a fun time. Uh, it was even better. <laughs> I actually went with mom, so she joined in and she really enjoyed the film too. She enjoyed all the short films. Yeah, he was a bit honest, trying to think to himself like, yeah, his movies were were bad and you know they suck and all that, but nah. Hey, they're not meant to be masterpieces. I mean, I thought they were just fun. He put them all together. He took some time. And it was really nice to see a bonus uh, included after all six of the shorts together. Yeah. Uh, I love all the famous mo I love all the moments that they put into it on those shorts, so it looks really cool. So it took a lot of work. I mean, it's great to see that they had some cameos here and there. They're just hanging around doing crazy shit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so that was cool. Had a fun time. So yeah, that's the, the screening of Night Owls at Echo Park Film Center in Echo Park, California. So it's cool. 
So I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.